Climate change is a big deal. A really big deal. Leonardo DiCaprio agrees. So how can we solve it? Let's look at some less than obvious options. Cube satellites have a lot of advantages. They are small, modular and cheap. Unlike their bigger cousins. CubeSats are built to be rapidly deployed and rapidly replaced. This means that unlike with old school satellites, a fleet of CubeSats is continuously updated and improved. Cube satellite technology will provide us with real-time monitoring of climate change, as well as its countermeasures. What gets measured gets managed. Privacy aside, this is a real game changer. This will give us a lot of new data. Big data. That's a big buzzword. Our definition of the term is the raw material to actionable insights. You can think of it as a mountain of information created by the satellites and other connected sensors. From it we can harvest understanding In order to do that harvesting, we will need artificial intelligence assistance, AIs for short. An AI is a piece of software built on the cloud that can perform really complex tasks, provided it has access to huge amounts of data to process. What we're talking about here are what's called narrow AIs. Narrow AIs are the only type of artificial intelligence software that are available for use today and they can do only one thing at a time, but can be trained to do so really, really well. The training uses a process called machine learning to understand how to solve specific problems by analyzing huge amounts of data. If our climate change AI has access to enough big data, it will give us insights in return. So, provided we got an abundance of high quality data gathered from CubeSats and other sources, what shall we tell our climate change fighting AI to do? Well, we could ask it to calculate the actual but hidden cost of carbon emissions to better justify investments in renewable energy. AI will empower governments, companies and citizens in making decisions based on actual data in real time. Wouldn't that be sweet? All this innovation is happening. How these technologies will be used remains a choice. So what can you and I do? First of all, we need to understand what we can do with the tools, right now and in the near future. Here's the 10x Labs analysis of the exponential development curves of the technology discussed in this video. As these three technologies mature and are combined, it will be felt by all of humanity. But how and in what way remains to be discovered, and we encourage you to join us in that exploration. If this makes you curious, we recommend these resources to further fuel that fire. We're living on a rising tidal wave of change, my friends, and this is how you learn how to surf on it. Thanks for watching.